for the continues chapter 10, section three notes. Now we're gonna look in the changes in enthalpy. So we're gonna take delta H and I was, well, going down to the bottom, I can see it already, where exothermic and endothermic reaction, trying to review. If something gets warmer, it's giving off energy. If it gives off energy, that means it's losing energy. So that's why it's negative. If it's gaining energy or it's getting colder, if it's getting colder, that means it's taking away energy from its surroundings. So if you touch it and it feels cold to touch, that means it's trying, it's actively taking energy away from your hand. So it's absorbing energy. That's why it's a positive delta H. So a delta H during a reaction depends on many variables, but temperature is one of the most important. Again, the standard enthalpies of reaction, which we just went over for the problems. We're gonna get into that some more. Um, we're gonna figure out how chemists actually did this in the lab, which is actually really fun to do. Unfortunately, we can't do it because we are home, but um, you can look up on YouTube, it's actually pretty cool. You take a thermometer and this is how they actually figure out how much energy that your food produces. Or let's say for instance, um, let's say you're eating a bag of chips. How much energy are you going to receive from that bag of chips? Or uh, parentheses, calories, which they're gonna measure energy in this term of calories instead of kilojoules. And then they can take that sample of food, um, I guess you would say ignite it explode it, see how much energy is given off from that food to the water. And when that, how much that water warms up is how much energy is given off by that reaction. Um, we were gonna do this somehow, some way. We actually did it a little bit before, but then we're gonna do it with food and we're gonna take the food and then we're gonna have a reaction and then we're gonna measure how much energy is given off or different types of food, and then we're gonna measure the water with a the thermometer. Fun times cannot be had anymore. Anyway, this is what we call calorimetry. Calorimetry, just like calories, is uh, how much energy, um, or the, well, let's not get the official de definition. Experimental, experimental measurement of an enthalpy change for a reaction is called calorimetry, or how much energy is given off from a reaction. Combustion reactions are always exothermic and always measured using a bomb calorimeter, which, yes, bomb calorimeter. I got really excited for this lab in college because I thought we we're gonna be working with bombs. I was wrong. This is common in nutritionists. Um, try to figure out how much calorie intake if you ever went on any kind of a diet to try to watch how many calories you're eating either to increase your calorie intake or decrease it, you're looking at measured reactions done by scientists based on your food or how much food you have. Which leads us to the hardest part of this chapter. This is what's gonna cause the most confusion. I'll try to go through this step by step. Hess's law. Hess's law is saying that any two processes that has the same beginning and end will have the same delta H, which is the basis for Hess's law just like your food, no matter how your food is made, you should still have the same food. So um, with the same ingredients, the same food should have the same amount of energy given off or calories. Hess's law, the overall enthalpy change in a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps of the process. For example, the change in enthalpy is the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or multiple steps or series of steps. So in this case, I have nitrogen plus oxygen produces nitrogen dioxide. The delta H is 68 kilojoules. If I take it and make a reaction out of multiple steps, but still end up with the same overall reaction, it should still be the same overall energy. So in this case, I have, let me get my pencil out so I can draw this. If I have N2O2 goes to nitrogen monoxide and the delta H is 180, but then I have 2NO plus O2 and produces nitrogen dioxide, it's negative 112 kilojoules. What we're gonna do, if you remember this, we're gonna cancel out things that are on different sides of the equation. So in this case, I have 
a 2 and 0 here and a 2 and 0 here. We'll go back. I have on this side of the equation, I have nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen monoxide on this side of the equation. Because they're on opposites, we can cancel them out. And that's the only thing we can cancel out right now. So in this case, I have nitrogen plus oxygen produces 2 and 0, or nitrogen plus 2 oxygen produces 2 and O. I'm sorry, and O2. What you can see is exactly like this equation, which if you do the math on here, comes out to be 68 kilojoules, which is exactly like this. So one step or two steps, it should come out to the exact same thing. Hmm, I did it anyway. Let's make it a little harder. When a cage, oh, actually, let's go through the, the rules first. When equations are, equa equations are added, subtracted, delta H is added or subtracted. When equations are multiplied, delta H is multiplied. So, going back to, well, actually, let's do another one. Um, enthalpy formation of CO, when CO2 and solid carbon are reactants, is found using the following equations below. So, this is, let's say this one is, I'm running out of room, A. And that's B. You have carbon plus oxygen produces carbon carbon dioxide monoxide, sorry. And then you have carbon plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide. You have two different delta H's for that. If I want to make carbon plus carbon dioxide goes to carbon monoxide, I figure out a way to do it. And I'll do a step by step. So let's look at the first one. I want carbon. I have carbon. I have two actual forms of carbon. So which one do I want? Because that's one here, and that's two there. Let me go with the B. Let's go with B. Oh, actually, I threw the back. Sorry. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. I've got to explain the step. All right. So I have two carbons and one carbon. If I add those together, it makes three. But what if I subtract them? What if I have, just like we did from the previous problem, what if one was on one side and one was on the other side, then that will cancel them out. Or that will subtract one from two, or two minus one would equal one. So in this case, I have carbon here on the reactants. If I can put it on the products, if I can switch both sides, then that will cancel them out. So I make a negative of B. So my first step is to take B and flip it to where carbon is on the products and carbon dioxide, carbon and oxygen on the products and carbon dioxide is on reactants. And we simply just multiply this by a negative. So by putting a negative, it flips it to where now carbon dioxide is a reactant, carbon and oxygen are the products. And it also flips the delta H. So the negative applies to both the reaction and the energy. Add it to A. So this is, let me see if I can label this. This is a negative B, and this is A from these equations up here. So in this case, now we can say that carbon dioxide is over here, which we want. So we're going to leave that alone. We have two carbons here two carbons here, one carbon there. So let's subtract them. So let's say that two gets rid of there and that's gone. And we have oxygens on both sides. This oxygen is here and this oxygen is here. Let me get rid of them. And I have two carbon monoxides, which is what I want. So actually, let me got to circle that. So our final product is carbon solid plus carbon dioxide. I should use another color, this looks bad. Yeah, that's better. Carbon plus carbon dioxide produces two carbon, I'm not gonna actually put, what was this, grams? We'll use that later. 
And now our equation is 393, 393 minus 221, which do us a quick math, 2. 7, 1, so 172 kilojoules, I think. Let's see what I have. Yep. Everything looks good. All right, on to the problems.